Adam and colleagues, I really wish I could believe that we can manage the costs that would control climate. Very sadly, I have to quote Samuel Johnson, the great British lexicographer. An obstinate stubbornness, a rationality, stops me believing it. And with a twinkle in my eye, because we're in New York and near Wall Street, what I want to show, very dangerously, is that climate science and these costs are subprime science, subprime economics, and above all, subprime politics. And they will cost us dear, despite what Adam and Oliver and Hunter will be saying. And we've got to be very, very careful. And Bjorn used a very important phrase. Let's not just follow what's fashionable. In fact, Johnson, again, had a wonderful phrase for it. Let's not be befuddled by the clamour of the times. <laughs> Let me, therefore, start by science. I'm not going to say much on science because I agreed with what Robert said right at the start in this. It's actually not very much about the science. It's always been about economic and political choice. Everything is, when it comes down to it, like it or not. But I just want you to have one image, and it's a very serious scientific image. It's, I want you to think of the world. I want you to think of the world from inner Siberia to Greenland, then to Singapore, and then come to the Arab states and to Sahara. What, ladies and gentlemen, is the temperature range I have just covered? It is from minus 20 degrees C to nearly 50 degrees C, a range of 70 degrees C in which humanity has adapted and learnt to live. We are talking about, ignoring the extremes that Oliver said, a prediction of 2 to 3 degrees C. What a funk! I'm very serious. What a funk. Humanity lives successfully from Greenland to Singapore to Saudi Arabia. 70 degrees C. And what is more, the carbon reductions will not produce an outcome that is predictable. Climate is the most complex, coupled, non-linear, chaotic system known to man. Of course there are human influences in it. Nobody denies that. But what outcome will they get by fiddling with one variable at the margins? I'm sorry, it's scientific nonsense. And a very serious nonsense. But it's the economics above all, because that's the motion, the costs. I come from the left wing politically. I am fed up of environmentalists putting regressive costs and taxes on the poor. It always costs more in the end, whatever Adam and the others say, and it's always fundamentally on the poor. They've forgotten the famous Jevons paradox. Professor Jevons from my own country, University College London, that actually when you save on energy, you don't really save, you simply transfer it to new energy costs and actually probably issue more CO2. So when you save energy, you take another holiday, you take another flight, your CO2 increases. And he demonstrated that in the 19th century. Have we forgotten this basic economics? But above all, it's this. I'm going to be honest about this. I don't trust the environmentalist agenda. For 30 to 40 years, what they have fundamentally been wanting to do is place an infinity in cost-benefit. In other words, so that the rationality of economic choices is undermined by effectively a religious choice not an economic choice. <laughs> under an infinity, of course, choice is not made under the procedures that were put down by Peter and by Bjorn. But it won't work. And that leads me, it becomes a closed system of thought. And that always worries me deeply. But it's the politics then, finally, subprime politics. We are full of eco-posers, and in the United States, you have some gems. <laughs> I don't think I need to mention them. But what we've got to remember is that this motion is about the costs of artificially, in a sense, forcing down the carbon. Energy security, efficiency, 
are no-nos. Of course, they're absolutely vital. Energy security will become one of the major themes of the Obama administration, and rightly so. But that isn't artificially forcing down carbon. And exactly as Peter said, only this week, China announced a 30% increase by 2015 in its coal production. Actually announced that only this week. And in a sense, we are not being realistic. As I said, I would love to be able to think we can control climate, when of course it is indeed going to have to be adaptation, flexibility, but to an outcome that we don't know, because I actually don't know what climate they wanting to produce for us. And actually, I don't think they know either. <laughs> but let me come back to Johnson again, because Johnson said everything. Bible, Shakespeare and Johnson, you've got it. <laughs> and Johnson said virtually everything. In a very, very brilliant book that he wrote in the 18th century there called Rasselas, he talks of an astronomer who claims that he can control climate. This is what he says. The sun has listened to my dictates and passed from tropic to tropic by my direction. The clouds at my call have poured their waters. And what does Johnson say about this astronomer? astronomer? He was mad. And so are we if we actually believe we can control climate predictably. The costs in every sense will be enormous. Oh, mamma mia. We are the dancing queens. Let's give this global warming nonsense its Waterloo tonight. Thank you.